All right, next we have Kurt Gooch from New York. He's actually going to be speaking twice today, so. Okay, good morning. Good morning, Kang. Um, so I want to recognize my colleagues at Nutrient um, for this, uh, this uh, paper, basically, and tool we're going to present. So Mark Storman, who's going to talk next, he's here. Um, Garth Boyd, Dana Kirk, Craig Freer, and Frank Miller. And so it's a great team, and I'm very proud and pleased and humbled to work with these group of people. Um, so um, this this tool we're going to talk about it was funded essentially through um, all these entities listed here. They're all dairy industry entities. If you know dairy, you will recognize those groups right off. And so um, this group uh, puts money into uh, to Nutrient, and uh, some of the money from Nutrient was used to develop this tool. Um, skipping to the end, this is the deliverable in some ways, which is uh, the NEAT uh, matrix. And so NEAT is a nutrient evaluation assessment tool. And so basically what we decided as a group is that we uh, spent a lot of time developing a catalog, an online catalog for motor treatment technologies. Mark is going to talk to you about that next. Um, but, uh, you know, when we worked through that, we basically said, well, it'd be really good to come up with some way of scoring these technologies. Um, and so we, 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 we appreciate the, uh, the good work that you've done and uh, others will continue to do and others have done. Um, and we've used that along with some other information to come up with this tool. So part of the, most of the talk is explained to you how we got to here, but I wanted to show you what that deliverable is. So just kind of thinking about, we've already talked a little bit about um, solid liquid separation. Um, and so if a farm wants to do a couple things like maybe pump further less energy, generate bedding, uh, reduce the uh, size or extent of use of long-term storage, that all leads into this solid liquid separator. I just pulled this out of the hat because we could have thrown up any one of 20 technologies um, as an example. Um, and I think we've all seen solid liquid separators, but if you haven't, the liquid comes in the, the uh, on the, uh, let me see if I can be dangerous here, at the top into the screw press separator, separate solids drop out here, and the separated liquids go this way. Um, so basic operation, doesn't matter what company is a screw press, that's how they work. And so, uh, basically, put the energy into a solid liquid separator, the influent, we end up with separated solids and separated liquids. And basically, a lot of it that's been done in the past is to achieve these goals that I listed here by the farms would have. But when you, when you ask yourself, so what about nitrogen? What about phosphorus? What about liquid storage volume effects? What about greenhouse gases, odor emissions, and pathogens? You know, a lot of those were just discussed. Um, but, okay, so that's for screw press separators. What how about inclined screen separators. You could ask yourself the same questions. And there's more questions that we could we asked ourselves, right, Mark, than just these. Um, but these are the ones that we landed on that we felt are important as a critical indicator of performance for the dairy farmer um, to, to have and, uh, and be able to access very easily. So this uh, process was basically um, adopt. Uh, we basically came up with this neat process adopting or adapting whatever um, uh, ISO um, standards or developing standards. So we use that and there was four key things that we landed on um, in responding to a need in the marketplace. Um, so um, definitely farms say, well, how well does this work compared to that, right? Um, based on expert opinion, so that gets into, you know, the actual developing the process and what, what the results are. Um, we use multi-stakeholders, and some of you in the room actually participated in this as an external reviewer, um, but uh, there was a lot of stakeholders as well, um, and it was based on a consensus. So, so when we worked at DMI on this a couple of times in person meetings, you know, there was a, there's a, we went around the, the, uh, the conference table, and uh, there was uh, essentially consensus uh, developed or not on some things. So, and it, it really worked well. So if we look at the um, ISO process, it's over here. So there's a preliminary stage, there's a proposal stage, a preparatory stage, committee stage, inquiry, approval, and publication. So we basically said, well, we're not, we can't quite do all that. And you gotta remember, this is funded internally by the dairy industry. So there's no outside money per se into this. So we, we said, we recognize that, we have a team, but we're gonna get something done with what we have, the resources we have. So the group said, well, why don't we modify this and come up with um, a process that we think would work for this to develop, you know, our neat tool. 
So, um, and, and Franklin Leonard is the one who's credited for, for calling this the new school. So many of you, many of you know who Franklin Leonard is. He's an outstanding thinker, and, and I give him a lot of credit for coming up with an acronym that really works for this process. Um, so we basically said, what are our critical indicators that we want to be uh, looking at for manure treatment processes that farmers would like to know, know about? What's the structure? Uh, what's our scope of work? Um, we need a committee and we need to review these factors. We need to have literature and documentation. Um, we need some outside reviewers and final approval and then we need to get this stuff out so it's available. Makes sense, right? So what I'm going to do is basically go step by step through these and try to give you a quick synopsis of what's in each one of those. There's a lot more detail. Um, there's a there's a journal uh, manuscript that's been that's essentially done. Um, hasn't been submitted yet, but we're going to try to get this published. Our goal is to publish this. Um, so, um, you know, most in academic arenas, we don't talk much about stuff until it's public, right? Well, in this sense, the dairy is just funding it. Dairy is just saying, look, we need to have this stuff now. We need to have this to make decisions. So we decided as a group to go ahead and start letting some of this out before the manuscript is published. Is that fair, Mark? So, um, the critical indicator concept, we thought, well, by evaluating the impact of each technology type, so a technology type is a separate screw press separator, right? It's not a bower or a fan or Dota. It's just a screw press separator. Has on critical environmental and operational indicators. So we're thinking about the things the farms have to think about. You know, their environmental impact, which is, uh, you know, the food processors and <coughs> some consumers are very sensitive to environmental impact of, of agriculture and, and dairy is one of the, one of the, was, was selected in 2006 by Walmart to be one of five products they sell on the shelves to say, we need to know your greenhouse gas footprint. So dairy has been really proactive to the environmental side, um, because, somewhat because of that. So the operational indicators and grouping the technologies by the critical indicator and basically give us a tool that the industry would use, use as a resource. So that's what, that's what happened there. So this is a summary uh, table from that, from that initial step. So here's our technology groupings by type. So prelim, uh, primary separation, secondary separation, uh, physical chemical stabilization, as we call it, nutrient recovery, um, and then energy recovery. And those that work, uh, where those of the work of nutrient, we have to always remember how to spell nutrient correctly, <laughs> <laughs> because there's nutrient and there's nutrient. Um, evaluate technology types that would all fall in each of these categories that are listed here, and I won't, I won't go through every one of them. Just you can see um, which technology types falls into a category. So the, the uh, six critical performance indicators are nitrogen, phosphorus, liquid, um, manure storage implications, greenhouse gas, no surprise there, odor reduction, and pathogen reduction. So there were more, but again, these are the ones that the group settled on as important um, for the dairy industry. And this was all vetted out through, as, as this is this is probably about a year's worth of work on this, right, Mark? And so this went through the, uh, the nutrient board for, you know, approval and evaluation and those kinds of things. So they felt like, yep, we landed on the right thing. Uh, so on nitrogen recovery, obviously there's nitrogen in manure. That's, you know, these are the reasons why we think it's important. Um, there was the care versus cow palace case in 2015. Those of us have heard about that, right? I believe that was the, the end, that was like the straw that broke the camel's back that got the dairy industry to basically put the money together to find it. Um, they were really, really worried about the, what the, the judge says as a result of that case. Um, we know that groundwater and surface water issues are associated with nitrogen, air quality issues, and it's critical for crop growth, right? So good, good reasons to be a critical indicator. Same with phosphorus. It's in manure. Um, there's DMDLs that are ba phosphorus based. There's surface water algorithms where Peter and I um, live in the Great in the Finger Lakes, and this is the Great Lakes. Let me through too. Um, every year, there are more and more issues in, in the Finger Lakes with algal blooms, and guess who they blame? The dairy farmers. Um, Critical for nutrient use are uptake and growth. Um, storage, storage is a is a really good water quality BMP when it's managed properly. Allows us to uh, to uh, achieve the four R's in, in some cases. So the right nutrients at the right rates at the right time at the right place. Right. Um, climate change. Um, I I see how our farms in in the, the Finger Lakes are responding to wet wet springs in the last five or six years. So there's definitely something going on there. Um, and then the greenhouse gas implications with manure storages, um, which ties right into greenhouse gas reduction. Why that's important, and you know society is saying greenhouse gases are important. I go to 
I go to DMI and our nutrient meetings, we talk a lot about greenhouse gases and we talk about um, water quality as well. And we talk about all the other environmental concerns. Go back to upstate New York, it's all about water quality. No discussion about greenhouse gases. Um, so it's interesting how that changes. But this is important. California, if you don't know that, passed legislation a few years ago to start reducing mandated reduction of greenhouse gases. So another reason why that's important. Um, and if you don't know this, California is the largest dairy industry, dairy, dairy state in the country. Um, odor reduction. So a lot of people smell with, or they see with their noses. Um, and so um, odor reduction is important from a community neighborhood standpoint. And um, upset neighbor, neighbors who uh, are, are funded by the odors from the farm, they could probably find other reasons to, uh, uh, other ways to, uh, to get at their desires to hold back on expansion, maybe manure storages. We've had that issue in New York as well. So odor, odor reduction is important. So that's a little bit of background why those critical indicators were selected. Um, the proposed critical indicator structure, we basically peer-reviewed publications were available. When, we, when they were available, we used those to kind of evaluate um, the critical indicators on those different minority treatment technology types. Um, Third-party documents, so those would be non-peer-reviewed. And then expert opinion. So if you look at this neat metrics, this is just the generic um, down here. So there's peer-reviewed. And so basically we're saying nitrogen recovery negative, that's a peer review. So that's, 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 uh, that's there. But when it comes to, uh, phosphorus recovery, there, we felt like there wasn't enough peer reviewed information. So it became more, okay, what reports were out there from projects, um, re, or maybe research reports to funders and that sort of thing. So that's a documented. And then there's expert opinion, and that would be the opinion of the TAT backed up by the independent third party reviewers that participated in this. Um, the scope of work and process, de process determination or documentation. So again, there's a lot of literature behind this. Um, there's small work groups that broke out to look at all this stuff. Then they came and they developed a, a recommended CI score and then basically convened to discuss uh, each group. All the groups came together and discussed their findings and we developed a consensus of opinion on the scores. You know, this is a kind of a draft stage right now, right? So basically, everybody voted on on that, and there was a lot of moving things around. Mark, remember that we spent a day and a half, basically moving things around based on the expert opinions um, at the table. Um, Two thirds majority vote required. Sounds like Congress, right? Um, and so when we look at this, basically, um, oh, I, I forgot to mention clear, uh, specifically here. There's a, a positive and negative effect. So some of these technologies have a negative effect, right, on these critical indicators. So um, and on the top, more negative, more positive. And, and there was versions before this where actually we had some numbers at the top. And we said, wait a minute, we're not quite ready to go that far yet. So we, we backed away from that. So, um, additional literature. So we, we basically came back together. Um, we did our thing in the previous step. And we said, look, we've got these, we're going to put together these draft neat reports for each technology type. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna basically put it out there for small committees again. And we're going to review it, and we're going to hopefully find some more information that could strengthen some of these opinions to documents or peer reviewed, if possible. Um, this is a, sort of a snippet of one of these uh, draft um, neat reports. So this happens to be, and I chose this from for Amber Digestion because that's uh, something that we have done a lot of work in. I just picked it out of one of the twenty, I guess. And so this was with, so this would be at the top. Here's the here's what the the neat tool looked like before it was called a neat tool, actually. And then here's a table of values, and then there's a summary, which kind of goes on and on and on, and then a lot of references that were available. So there was one of those developed for each of the technology types. Um, those went out for review for, for folks, um, got the comments back, went through the comments, a lot of great comments provided. Um, but our, our group convened again. TAD is a technical advancement team in Nutrient, and we basically made the final decisions. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the final draft, what we call the final report, was submitted to the Nutrient CEO for approval. Um, obviously, this was nothing new to him at this point in time. He just kept up the speed and knows what was going on. He'd seen drafts of this stuff um, probably multiple times. Um, final results, results incorporated in the Nutrient Online Catalog. Mark is going to talk to you about the catalog. Um, and then I mentioned that we prepared this manuscript. So uh, this is a generic version. How much time do I have? Um, so I'm going to actually think maybe try to um, show you the catalog, uh, a more, uh, not a generic version, but um, I have to remember my instructions here so you guys can see this. 
yeah, this makes it hard. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, um, uh, so this, yeah, so this is a, mm, I can't do it. What I have to do is I have to slide this all over and I can't see it so you guys can see it. So uh, that's, uh, got good instruction from Tang, so I know I need to do that before I got up here. But, um, okay. Coming up yet? Can we get it over further enough? Okay. Yeah, this is pretty difficult to do. <laughs> anyway, um, it keeps changing on me. What I wanted to show you is, is it's, this is not a, a generic, but this is actually one for uh, screw press separators. And this is this is available in the Drew Cal, and that's about the best I can do given the constraints here. But um, so here's the critical indicators, and so peer-reviewed information, um, uh, documented um, information went into that critical indicator. And so if you go to the catalog, there's over 200, what's the number, 265? 275 entries. So so Fan, Bauer, Dota, I mean, you can just imagine, you know, all the screw press people, essentially there's a page there about them. And the critical indicator meet matrix is on each of their pages. So the way it's set up, Mark will tell you all this, the catalog set up with their information, and then there's the, the nutrient review and input on their stuff that's at the, essentially on the same page. So anyway, I would be glad to take any questions. I think we maybe have a few minutes. But I want to give you a quick synopsis of, of the neat tool. Any questions? Yes? So it sounds like you're going to have to continually update this, though. Yes. Yeah, I mean, for example, information that was just presented here by Wisconsin, right? So good stuff. Go into the hopper. Mark, how often would we maybe be sure to think about updating something? Well, uh, the so idea is that annually will be doing ongoing reviews, so it's probably not going to be a concentrated, you know, start the process over, but continually review what we're supposed to launch the 20 different categories. And then as we see publications come on, we can update the information. So it's a, it's a living document. Yes. Your, your focus is on dairy. What about other uh, animal types? Uh, swine? Um, how, how, how does this apply to those? Well, we, we I'll, I'll, I'll start. We got Mark chime in if you want. Or Mark, why don't you just go ahead, Mark? <laughs> uh, well, our focus is on dairy because we're funded by the dairy industry. We certainly um, reached out to the other <laughs> animal ag. Areas they're structured a little differently as in these conversations yesterday, and so there's not always the same sort of check off money commitment to waste management, things like that. Those the producers are separate from the people who are you know, being charged with check off. But um, the technology generally will apply. So you know if, if solid liquid separation for dairy cattle is positive, you know low positive for you know nitrogen. Then it's probably going to be very similar for the poultry industry, and maybe a little higher for the you know, poultry because of the drier conditions. So you can kind of extrapolate, but right now we don't have any funding from the other animal groups, so those are not included at this time. I was just going to say we've met with some beef ranchers who were like, "Really, this is good stuff. We, we would like to see this for our lunch. I've heard that in other ways too. But, uh, so. Go ahead. I don't have a question. I have a comment. <clears throat> um, and the comment is, uh, there are a few times in the industry it's just kind of slow moving and it's all. So what, where, who are you worried about? I'm with, I'll keep that with that. Okay. Yes. So that's my thought there. But the point simply is, there are a few things that change in this industry. It's kind of a slow industry. The, this is one of those times I think it's a game changer, honestly. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of practitioners, there's a lot of dairy farm owners that, that relate and get their information from other dairy farm owners. And, and it's more of a grassroots thing. This, to me, provides impartiality, objectivity, and, and probably a lot of facts that people don't care about. So I think it's a game yeah. I appreciate it. No, no, I appreciate that as well. And, and, and I think it's the point you made, and I probably should have said this, is that even though that nutrient is funded by the dairy industry, I can, I can honestly stand up here and tell you that the people on the TAP team are, are not here to make the dairy industry look good. We're here 
to, to work on real problems and help them move forward. So all this stuff I'm giving you is our best unbiased professional engineering judgment. And not lip service and make it look good in my head. But I appreciate it. Anything else? Thank you. Right. Thank you.